If you're in the wrong place by the wrong time, you can see the burning pieces of International Space Station coming down towards you. As NASA is planning to crash the ISS into the ocean by 2030, we all are curious about the new station that will replace this iconic space lab. Do we have to say goodbye to the ISS? And most importantly, what comes next in this endless exploration of the universe? Since its first construction in 1998, the International Space Station has been a celestial marvel. Orbiting our planet began with the launch of Russia's Zarya module. This project brought together two nations that once locked in bitter rivalry, the US and Russia. The ISS was built in orbit. Each module, crafted and launched individually, was carefully interconnected in the open space. This human-built structure, weighing over 400 tons and stretching as large as a football field, orbits the Earth at 28,000 kilometers per hour, and it's at an average of 400 kilometers above the surface. Over the years, the ISS has become a bustling hub, hosting over 250 astronauts from 20 countries since its first crew arrived in November 2000. Going back further, the ISS is a brainchild born from NASA's Freedom Project in 1984. While it might be smaller than what was planned for Freedom, it's still Earth's largest artificial satellite. Even though some love to assume that this space lab is solely an American project, but the ISS is truly an international collaboration involving five space agencies from three continents. NASA, European Space Agency, Japanese Space Agency, Canadian Space Agency, and Roscosmos, working together to achieve the extraordinary. The discoveries made on the ISS aren't confined to the weightless of space. The absence of gravity provides a unique platform for developing groundbreaking cancer treatments, Alzheimer's research, and much more. On a greater scale, the ISS is like a beacon of knowledge, guiding us toward medical breakthroughs that can transform lives on Earth. Fascinating thing about the ISS is that, apart from our planet, it's one of the only two places in the universe where you'll always find humans. The other place would be the Chinese space station, Tiangong. However, it can't operate forever. In the not-so-distant future, the ISS will reach on its grand finale. NASA is planning to bring the station back to Earth and crash it into the ocean in 2031. Obviously, deorbiting the ISS is no ordinary feat. It's a Herculean endeavor that demands ingenious planning. History has witnessed the fiery demise of sizable objects like Russia's Mir space station in 2001 and NASA's Skylab in 1979 as they blazed through Earth's skies. However, the ISS presents an entirely new level of challenge, as it's more than three times their size. While the ISS has defied time, with its operational life extended several times, venturing beyond 2030 becomes a high-stakes gamble. Options like boosting it to a higher orbit are deemed infeasible by NASA, requiring a fleet of spacecraft for the monumental task. Instead, the space agency has laid out a daring plan to gently nudge the entire station back into Earth's atmosphere. The journey begins in 2026, as the ISS's orbit naturally decays, dropping from its 400 kilometers altitude to about 320 kilometers by mid-2030, thanks to atmospheric drag. A final crew will be dispatched to the station at this point, ensuring that any remaining equipment or historical artifacts are carefully retrieved, lightening the station's load. As the ISS's altitude further comes to 280 kilometers, reaching the point of no return, a spacecraft poised to provide the decisive push it further into the atmosphere. As the station glides down to an altitude of 120 kilometers, ISS starts to enter Earth's thicker atmosphere. As a result of this forceful re-entry, modules of the station will start to catch fire. But the real fireworks begin when the space lab is around 80 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The individual modules that make up the spacecraft are torn apart from one another, ignited by re-entry temperatures soaring into the thousands of degrees. They melt and disintegrate in a dazzling display of cosmic chaos as the sky rumbles with several spine-tingling sonic booms. When the ISS crash landes in the Pacific Ocean, things won't end there. Instead, it will leave behind a colossal debris trail, unlike anything humanity has ever witnessed scattering several kilometers. Now, while this grand re-entry promises to be a visual extravaganza, it's not without its skeptics. Some voices in the space community raise concerns about the ISS's descent, seeing it as a waste of valuable materials. Inside the ISS lie treasures beyond measure, 
cutting-edge equipment, and invaluable resources, such as the precious metals in its truss and the high-tech solar panels, all painstakingly transported to space at tremendous cost. So there are ideas about reusing the metals from the ISS to build a new space station, but a definite conclusion has not been reached yet. So, as we are preparing to say goodbye to the ISS in less than a decade, what will replace it? Sure enough, we are not done with all the experiments in zero gravity. NASA is already planning to construct a brand new space station, the Lunar Gateway, which will be 1,000 times further than the current station, approximately 400,000 kilometers away from Earth, right in the vicinity of the Moon itself. This groundbreaking endeavor is set to start as early as 2024 and is poised to play a pivotal role in NASA's grand vision of maintaining a human presence on the Moon and ultimately launching missions to Mars and beyond. The Lunar Gateway promises to be a celestial hub of innovation, a launchpad for humanity's dreams of cosmic exploration. Although NASA is planning to collaborate with other countries for the Lunar Gateway and make it as international as the ISS, there are other countries that want to build their own space station just like China did. For example, in 2022, Russia announced its exit from the ISS by 2024, redirecting its focus towards constructing the Russian orbital space station in low Earth orbit. The Russian space lab will be constructed in two stages, with the first part to be built between 2025 and 2030, followed by the second stage between 2030 and 2035. Another promising bid for future space stations comes from India, with its budding space program. ISRO is setting its sights on building its own space station by 2035. While it may be smaller in scale compared to the ISS, weighing just 22 tons and hosting astronauts for shorter stints of 15 to 20 days, it symbolizes India's growing aspirations in the cosmic arena. As NASA shifts its focus away from constructing space stations in low Earth orbit, it's actively nurturing private companies to take the reins. Axiom Space, a notable player in this cosmic revolution, awarded a NASA contract in 2020 to develop up to four modules. These modules are designed to attach to the ISS by 2025, offering enhanced capabilities and versatility to the station and later detached to orbit independently when the ISS completes its lifespan. We are hopeful and excited about these future plans since more stations we scatter throughout our cosmic neighborhood, the more doors open to pioneering ventures that may one day take humanity into a new era of interstellar exploration. These orbiting platforms aren't just stations, they're stepping stones toward establishing outposts across our vast solar system, fueling our insatiable curiosity and propelling us towards the boundless frontiers of space. Are you sad to see the ISS go? Or are you excited about the biggest fireworks humans will ever see? Let us know in the comments section. If you're still watching, I want to say that as a small YouTuber, I make a huge effort to make good and watchable videos. And I can't publish a video every day or five times a week because I try to make a video that would worth your time. So I hate to sound cliche, but I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you.